here at the University of Dundee we have had a lot of support in getting this work done and in particular Peter and I are both employed just now within the Scottish Improvement Science Collaborating Centre which is based in the School of Nursing and Health Sciences at the University. The study came about from my former work with the Needle Injecting Surveillance Initiative study in Scotland. So this, this, work, this study came about as a result of examining data that had come up through the NESI study, the Needle in Exchange Surveillance Initiative study in Scotland, which I used to be part of. So across the different sweeps of data, it became apparent in the 2015 sweep that we suddenly were recruiting an awful lot more, substantially more NPS injectors than we ever had. And that triggered my interest in this and, and a concern about the relationship between that, the potential relationship between that and bloodborne virus transmission or hepatitis C acquisition amongst people who inject drugs. So looking at that data, I started to then review the literature, see what was around, and quickly, quickly became apparent that there weren't a lot of studies who were looking at current injecting groups. So as, as we said earlier, there was an awful lot done in NPS use, NPS non-injecting, an awful lot, but not, not a lot at all was known about how opiate injectors were adapting or not, or adopting uh, NPS injecting. So at the same time as, as these numbers were, were becoming bigger in, through the NESI study, so amongst people who were injecting drugs in Scotland, we also knew internationally that NPS was becoming a bigger and bigger area of concern and the numbers of drugs that were getting reported to the European Monitoring Centre for Drugs and Drug Addiction, the EMCDDA, what was increasing year on year, it was increasing exponentially, so there was obviously the, the, the sites internationally were on NPS use and the harms that were being caused. So the other, other issue was the NPS, where, where there were so many NPS coming into the market so quickly that literally physicians, people in hospitals, people in frontline services were finding it really difficult to provide appropriate treatment because literally they did not know and, and People who were injecting themselves had no idea what was in these substances, so therefore it became very difficult to treat. We also anecdotally were experiencing a lot more accidents. People were literally throwing themselves off buildings, jumping off buildings, so there was an awful lot of damage being caused early on and a, and a real lack of understanding as to what these drugs were, what they could do and the best ways to prevent harm associated with them. So it was a qualitative study um, and we recruited 47 participants for semi-structured interviews and these were conducted in injection equipment provision facilities across three health board areas. The main NPS drugs that people tended to inject were what you could term as stimulant type novel psychoactive substances and these were mainly things like methadrone, uh, ethylphenidate um, and they had sort of street names as well like things like um, you know, if you've got traditional drugs like cocaine uh, then the, the NPS drug would have a name that tried to emulate what that effect would be okay. would be things like Ching, um, Go Char Game. Machine, Go Game, mm -hmm. yeah. um, what was there any other ones? I'm thinking of there was Burst was one there of was them. There was Blue. Blue, mm -hmm. China White. The names reflected the sort of effect that they were, they were supposed to emulate. Yeah. And one of the things that was really interesting about this population of people wasn't it was the fact that they'd already been injecting opiates mainly for a number of years. So that was of particular interest in this study because there's been a lot of research actually looking at NPS use other than injecting. And some studies looking at NPS injecting as well, but not, not many at all, have looked at what happened amongst opiate users when NPS came on the scene uh, and what impact did that have on their drug using at that point. Yeah. 
So this was the main object of this study. And actually we found some really interesting contrast, didn't we, between what how people injected opiates and how they went on to inject NPS. Yes. And from, from our own study, we feel that's had a big impact on risk, some of the risk taken around drug injecting. I mean, it was very interesting the fact that they moved from um, a depressant type drug, an opiate, to stimulant type you know, psychoactive substances. Mm -hmm. And this was found amongst really the majority, wasn't it? Thinking yeah. back, so it was over ninety percent, I think, had moved from opiates to mm -hmm. to stimulant yeah. injecting. And, then, and so what we found with that was that people who perhaps traditionally were more likely to inject in either alone or in smaller groups then began to inject a drug that they didn't know. A drug with a huge range in strength, often very, very strong, and, and in bigger groups than they'd usually injected it. 